Okay, so let's get the USB connector on. Excellent, cool. Here it goes here. Oh shit. Hey everyone, this is a story about making sure that you check all of your sizes and all of your positions thoroughly before you put a PCB in for manufacturing. I thought I did, clearly I didn't. And so this is a showcase of what I got wrong and me fixing it. So this is my current test jig, my multi-board test jig version one. And some of you might've seen on a previous stream it was actually a few days ago, but I don't know when you're gonna watch this video, that I am making a new version of it, a V2 that is designed to, instead of being this big monstrosity, this high thing, running for Raspberry Pi, instead I want to make it longer and lower. And the intent is to run it off a Raspberry Pi still, but sitting in one of these Argon Neo cases, which the whole case acts as a heatsink. The whole thing's metal. Well, the top is, the bottom's plastic. And so there's thermal paste that connects the actual physical case here to the ICs underneath to keep it cool. It's all passively cool. It's pretty cool. So what I did was I designed the PCB on my stream. Well, I've been designing the PCB for quite a while, but I've come to a point now where I desperately need these new test jigs designed. And so I finished it off on the stream and got it fully routed and then spent a couple of hours after that just fixing up some of the traces, neatening up a little bit, getting rid of some of the layer hopping and then I 3D printed out a version of the PCB to test and I wasn't really thinking at the time and I printed it out without all of the holes. I thought to myself, nah, I don't need the USB connector here, I don't need this, I don't need that, I don't need the header pins over here. I just wanted to make sure that the four holes lined up. And I thought I had measured and checked the positions for everything. Well, it turns out I hadn't, but let's get to that in a second. I couldn't place it on here because I didn't put the header pins in. I got rid of them right before I printed it, right? This is a 1.6 millimeter 3D print. But I do have the positions for the screws. And although this particular case doesn't have the four screws, these two screws over here are obscured, the Raspberry Pi itself, normally does have the four different screw holes. And so that's why I added the extra ones up here. But my plan originally was that this would connect here and I'd have mechanical strength from that and I'd have mechanical strength from these two screw holes. And then I'd also have some mounts over here, some feet that will hold it all together. And so I didn't bother printing everything out and then I realized that I couldn't plug this in anyway and I thought, you know what, everything looks fine. I'm just going to send the boards off to get built. So I did and put them in to get them manufactured. I also designed a adapter board just for my tiny Pico to start with. Uh, in this particular version, I didn't print the holes properly, but the adapter board is designed to sit just here. Off they went to get made. And while I was thinking to myself, you know what, I probably want to put a little bit more mechanical strength than what this has got because I was a bit worried about putting pressure on the headers. So the idea is this will sit here, screwed in and with the headers there. And then on these five points here would be a block, 3D printed block that sits there that my clamp would then sit on, All right? The clamp has to be higher because the adapter board has got headers in between, that's higher. So this, you put a different board in for each type of board I want to test. So that's higher, so therefore this had to be higher. So I'd make a custom mounting block. And the idea of making it a separate piece was if I had to adjust it or do anything to it, it's much quicker to print the block than this to print the whole thing assembly again. So I was a bit worried that, you know, the constant opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing would put a little bit too much stress on the headers here. So I decided to make a revision of the PCB, but it didn't matter for the first revision. Right? I could still use this, I could still build it, I could connect it, I could test it, I could write all the firmware for it and get it working and then just replace it when the new boards came in with a version that when you connect it, it's got the, these two have been moved away and you can now put a, a base plate on the bottom 
and the base plate would actually connect to these four screws as well. So the base plate would connect to the bottom of the Neo and then would connect here and here, here and here. So I'd basically sandwich the Raspberry Pi and the, the Neo case inside these two things, giving it stacks of mechanical strength. So I made these modifications and I thought to myself, awesome, I'm going to put the board in, a second version in for manufacturing and I'll swap them over whenever I get them. And at the last minute I thought to myself, you know what, I better just check everything else as well. And I put the USB connector on. And yes, it is clear from the case. But connectors on cables have shrouds. Look at that. How am I supposed to plug it in? I made it this clear, but I didn't give myself enough space for the actual cable. How stupid is that? What an idiot. So what that means is this board will not work at all. Well, I can't plug it in. I'm going to have to use something like a cable like this as an extender where I'll have to have that plugged in here and then plugged in here for now. And I'll have to do all my testing this way. Super frustrating. Super frustrating. I thought I'd taken care. I measured with my calipers to make sure that this USB connector here wouldn't hit the case, but I totally forgot about the width of a cable. A little mistake like this could have been easily avoided had I just printed this properly the first time instead of taking some shortcuts. So I've already redesigned the PCB. I've already fixed all of this. I will show you what it looks like and I am going to export it out as a 3D file and 3D print it and we're going to plug it in and check it works properly before I go and send it off to get made. Let's jump into Fusion. Okay, so I'm in Fusion 360. I've got a, a new project open called Multiboard Tester V2. I need to create a new electronic design and I need to attach the PCB. I don't need to import the schematic because I'm not doing anything with it other than creating an STL file out of it. So as you can see here, I've rounded the corners on this version as well. I've moved the PCB lower at the front, moved the USB connectors down. I've actually moved them down. There's a gap now of 13 millimeters. The gap was about three or four millimeters before. So I've given myself quite a bit more clearance. Had to rearrange everything at the front here. So what I need to do is uh, save this. It's gonna call multiple tester V2. And I need to turn it into a 3D file. Excuse the bouncing sounds in the background. My neighbor, I think, is trying out for the NBA, playing basketball right outside my workshop. So this gets sent off to the cloud. You can see here, preparing for compute. And you'll see the timeline start building as it comes out. It might throw a couple of errors because it's looking for 3D packages that I don't have. But I don't care. I don't want any of the components on there here. I just want the PCB outline. There we go. Yep. Eight parts that don't have anything, that's fine. Okay, now I'm just in wireframe mode. I'll show you why in a moment. Um, can turn off all these packages, don't need them. Board, I uh, don't need canvases, doesn't really matter. And under bodies, don't need copper holes. So I'm just gonna save this again, so it'll create a 3D version of the file. You'll see it appear here in a moment on the left. So this is the project file, this is my PCB file and this is the 3D file. So let it update. Okay, so the reason I'm in wireframe mode is I'm gonna to have to get rid of all these little drill holes and stuff because they just dramatically slow down the print. Okay, what I wanna do now is create a new file, a new design, because you can't modify the 3D file directly of, of the PCB. I need to save this first. Um, so this is going to be board STL. Okay. You need to save it first before you insert it because when you do an insert into current design, it does it off in the cloud. Everything about Fusion is in the cloud. So I tell it to insert it. It's going and grabbing the data in the cloud, putting it into this file, and then downloading it again, giving it to me here. You would have seen all the stuff on the side and then updating this here. And you'll see this update shortly once I've saved it. So this is now in here, which is great. I still can't modify this, but what I can do is grab the front face and I can extrude it and I want it to be 1.6 millimeters that's the thickness of my PCB and what that's done is if I turn off the original I've now got this body here that's my own version of the PCB now the reason it's in wireframe is I need to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff that's on here I don't want to have any of these little holes 
I'm just going to fast forward till this is already done. Okay, yay. Sorry about that. So, what we want to do now is grab all of the holes and I'm just going to zoom in a bit and I want to expand them by 0.1 millimeter. So, you can see now if I undo that and then redo it, that they get bigger. That's done it to all of them, including these. Undo, redo. And I need to do that to make sure that when it 3D prints it, it doesn't when it fills in those areas a bit more, that I've still got the right size holes. Okay, so I'm going to save this and we're going to export it. Save it as an SDL. I'm going to call this um, PCB V3. Okay, so here's Prusa Slicer. I'm going to grab the file and drag it in. And you can see there's the PCB. Infill of 15, which is fine. I'm going to slice now. And you can see here an hour and 21. Uh, I could probably get rid of the outline. Get rid of the skirt. Not nine, zero. And uh, that might shave a tiny bit of time. No, nah, not really. Okay, anyway, I'm going to export this and 3D print it. Well, it's just one of those days. So here's a 3D print still on the, the print bed. And guess who set up their camera in front of their printer to do a time lapse of the print, started the time lapse and walked away and immediately ran out of space on the SD card. I think I got uh, five JPEGs written and then it ran out. So, <laughs> what a disaster. Anyway, there's the new print. Uh, which way does it go? That way. There's the previous one. It doesn't look like it's much longer. But you can definitely see the USB has been brought down. So, let's plug it in and make sure it all fits around to the corners, as I said. Please fit. Did I not expand the, all the holes? This will just be a, oh no. Okay, bit of gunk on the print has blocked those holes. Okay, I'll take the headers out. These are just extended ones for the moment. Just so I can at least line this up on the holes. So it was a bad 3D print as well. Okay, so that's on the holes. Actually, you know what I can do? I should be able to screw this in. If I can find some screws. I had some screws on my desk. Maybe I put them away. It'd be very unlike me to put things away. Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, so holes are lined up. USB connector. And cable. That stacks of room! Stacks of room for the cable! Yay! And everything else lines up. Okay, we've got a winner. Look, I even printed the mechanical footprint for the mechanical switch. The mechanical footprint. The footprint for the mechanical switch, which I didn't do on this one. And I even printed these buttonholes over here just to make sure. Okay, so we have a winner. This PCB lines up. So this will fit on this, and that is going to be the size of my new test jig. So it's longer than my old test jig, but look how low it is. Well, you can't really see from the top, can you? Just uh, trust me that this height here, it's going to be a little bit higher, about another two millimeters, right? That height there is lower than halfway through this point here. It's not even as high as this USB connector. And the bottom plate I put on will be flush here. So it's really going to add another only two millimeters height. So I think this is going to work. And the clamp will be here and I'll be able to clamp them on and test my boards. And the USB goes on this side where the USB was on this side on my boards. Okay, yay. Thanks for watching everyone.
sometimes I feel like a real doofus, but this uh, project seems to be doomed from no SD card slot to a stuff up on the print to not checking this one properly to not even putting the right things on this one. Hopefully the boards will work. Hopefully I'll have mechanical strength and I'll have good electrical traces and design and everything will just work and I can start testing boards again. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out, especially the build videos for these. And to my patrons, your continued support allows me to waste all this money on filament. <laughs> it's great. Uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. I will catch you all later. Bye.